So here we are for a ground station tour part two. I'm here in Vernon, Utah. This is in southeastern Tooele County and it's southwest of Salt Lake City by about an hour and 20 minutes. Just moved to Utah and I had to come down here to check out the ground station in person. Much like the ground station that I showed you in Washington state, this is the only gateway station in the entire state of Utah. There are some nearby stations in Evanston, Wyoming and Panica, Nevada, but this is the only one in Utah. So what is Starlink's mission anyway? Well, if you're unfamiliar with Starlink, simply put, many communities across the country and the globe still lack access to broadband connectivity. So the goal with Starlink is to close that digital divide and provide access to this innovative, cost-effective, and spectrum-efficient technology of Starlink. So there are eight antennas fenced in behind me here, and these gateway stations only communicate with satellites that are visible on the horizon above a minimum elevation angle. It could be as low as 25 degrees. And to date, SpaceX has deployed 1,740 satellites in low Earth orbit, but the goal is to get all the way up to 12,000 for their constellation. And if you'll remember, it was all the way back in May of 2019 when SpaceX launched its first batch of operational Starlink satellites. This KA band gateway station delivers broadband data between the satellites of the non geostationary satellite orbit system and the terrestrial internet exchange points. And during the 36th annual space symposium that was back in mid August, we learned from SpaceX's president, Gwen Shotwell, why those Falcon 9 Starlink missions have come to a halt. Shotwell says they've been busy rushing to complete manufacturing the first batches of their next generation satellites and those next gen satellites are equipped with laser communication links. The next Starlink mission should be roughly three weeks away from that point so we're getting really close. So this West Coast launch that's scheduled for this month September could be the first to deploy an entire fleet of these next generation satellites. Also interesting, SpaceX has not launched a rocket from the West Coast since November of 2020. So this next launch will be from Vandenberg Space Force Base. It'll be the first Starlink mission launched from California. The mission's assigned name Starlink 2-1 is different than previous Starlink missions. We don't know much about the name change, but we can speculate that it has to do with it being SpaceX's first West Coast Starlink mission that will be deployed into different orbital parameters. Maybe it's hinting that SpaceX will launch the first entire fleet of the next generation Starlink Gen 2 system satellites. Now this mission will launch 51 Starlink satellites atop the Falcon 9 rocket, and it'll be the 29th operational Starlink mission, boosting the total number of Starlink satellites to 1,788. This will also mark the first launch of the third Starlink shell. And as you can see, the launch is scheduled for Monday, September 13th, so we are counting down the days. And back on January 24th, SpaceX launched 10 satellites into polar orbit. And another three Starlink payloads launched into a similar orbit in June on a subsequent rideshare flight. And of course, these satellites in polar orbit feature the laser links. This upgrade allows SpaceX to provide internet connectivity near the poles and in other regions without ground stations. Elon Musk said via Twitter, data packets do not need to touch regular internet. Data can flow from user terminal to satellites to user terminal. And the aviation and maritime sectors, both military and commercial offer huge potential markets for Starlink that can only be tapped with laser linking. The crosslinks are the key to truly getting lower latency than fiber optic cable, especially over long distances. Ground stations will still be relevant, but having these next gen satellites with the laser links will enable communications from one satellite to another on the same or adjacent orbital plane. A ground station does not have to be in the same satellite footprint as user terminals. And it's not just going to reduce the number of ground stations needed for global coverage. Laser crosslinks can also lower latency because they reduce the number of hops between satellites and those ground stations. 
At the last ground station I was at in Washington, they didn't have these user terminals up mounted. So interesting to see them here. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to like it and hit subscribe if you haven't already to my channel, Alien Space. I love bringing you guys new content and especially taking you on the road and showing you new places like here in beautiful Utah. I'm going to Texas, to Boca Chica in just a few days, so be sure to stay tuned for that coverage and I'll see you soon. In Utah, I'm here for one, oh God. Yo, it's so windy. I'm not okay with this. We learned from SpaceX. Oh my God, it's so windy. Stop! <laughs> so back on August 24th, we... <laughs> now these will make it much cape. It is so windy. Every time.